Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Zach Celedonia. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and joining me here after the holiday break, as promised, we deliver for the people. Is that not right, A one Flash Zach Celedonia, what's going on, my friend? Oh, yeah, man. Surprise. Here we are. I- I'm sure we were missed on Monday. Here we are, though, ready to perform. Dance, monkey. That's me. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We're uh, we're kind of all over the place today. It's like even though we have something that's like listed here, our topic is all over the board because we didn't really get to talk about the new uh, some of the new news coming around. There's some OTA stuff. There's uh, there's um, what do you want to say? Football in shorts going around. So uh, a few things to talk about. Uh, first of all. We've got a replacement for Kevin Colbert officially, the new general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers, one Omar Khan, who has uh, served in uh, various capacities over what? Great about, choice. Yeah. Great choice. Oh, I think so too. And a lot of people will talk about, well, Omar Khan isn't a, uh, isn't like a, a football, a football talent evaluator. He's not like the, the actual player guy that's going over there and, and saying, Hey, uh, you know, like kind of how we were figuring with like Brandon Hunt, but he's the guy who has made the um, the salary cap work and understands these deals. And I think that might be more important going forward dealers than the way football is because every wide receiver right now, every quarterback, you've got Deshaun Watson just screwed up the whole thing. You got Christian uh-huh. Kirk that just screwed up the whole thing. Christian yeah. Kirk, public enemy number one. Don't show your <laughs> face anywhere around the NFL agent, Christian Kirk. Yeah, absolutely. And that that you need somebody, I don't know, maybe that's where they felt in doing all of these interviews, what there were six final candidates here. And there's an, now going to be an an it's the an assistant uh general manager Andy Weidel who comes over from the Philadelphia Eagles and he's more of um Kind of like he's going to be the assistant general manager, Sheldon White, director of pro scouting and promotion of Dan Colbert to director of college scouting. So these moves all kind of fit underneath Omar Khan being named the general manager. The head honcho here is kind of the boss. He's surrounding himself and he self admittedly, if you saw his uh, press conference, he talks about it. He's going to put himself, put people around him that know the things that he doesn't. And that's what good leaders do. But yeah, I think Omar Khan, we were kind of talking about this. Like uh, people were like, why would the Steelers take Kenny Pickett without the the new gen- without hiring a new general manager? And I was like, well, he was in the building the entire time and you know what? We're we're right more than uh the broken clock that's right twice uh, twice a day. But yeah, taking someone from Howie Roseman's position or Howie Roseman has all these people filling out positions all over the NFL over there with the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Steelers poach one of them as an assistant general manager. So it's kind of funny though. It's almost like they have three people now, or at least two people coming in that they were doing the job of a one Kevin Colbert, who will still be around. There's the third person and in advisory capacity. So I like the move, Zach. Um, I don't know. I got much more else to say about that. It's exciting though. So there should be some continuity at least uh, carrying over from Kevin Colbert's uh, era as a general manager for the past 20 some years. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I, I know though. Yeah. General manager talk. So that's not really like, I mean, they don't, they're not the ones playing on the field, making the passes, catching the ball. So th- yeah, they're not the most exciting talk, but there is some points we can dive into here. You know, uh, so Khan has been with the team long time. Great. Love that. He's learned hands-on from Kevin Colbert, essentially be- being his apprentice or protege. And anytime over the past like 10 years, I would say where, we all would go nuts and and see that the Steelers signed X free agent for some cheaper deal than was expected. That's because of Omar Khan. Omar Khan is a cap wizard. So uh, the fact that he has that skill being applied to the general manager position position, and he's going to bring it with him in a more important role now, that's a great thing. Like his cap management isn't going to change. If anything, he'll have more of a say in it. So I love that. Love how he is with money. 
because often the Steelers aren't in a position that they were this year where they have a lot of cap space because we're a good franchise. So typically a lot of our money is put into in-house players. So the fact that Khan is going to continue to stay here and help the Steelers with these cheap contracts and team friendly deals, I I'm over the moon excited about, I was always rooting for the in-house hire and that's sacrilege to some Yinzers right now because they think that's all the Steelers do is in-house hire. And that's how we end up with Randy Fickner and Keith Butler and et cetera. But Omar Khan shouldn't be lumped in with those names. I don't even think Keith Butler is that bad, honestly, most of the time. But Oh, my uh, God. No, <laughs> Keith Butler, man. People who complained about him. People were complaining. Okay. People our complained. defense is always really good. I mean, I know the run defense sucked last year, but our defense is always – really good so i just don't understand the constant keith butler hey yeah i get it linebackers on receivers but that's the particular package that's schemed up it isn't like he's purposefully putting robert spillane on hollywood brown it's just the offense gets paid to make chess moves like that too so i don't really hate uh butler and that's the in-house hire thing just makes people cringe that think that omar khan like they're settling for him dude people were bidding for omar khan we we're lucky to retain him and the addition of uh Weidel, I liked that too because, truth be told, I don't know how much of a say Weidel had in these things, but the Eagles have been one of the teams of recent memory. I mean, they got a Super Bowl somewhat recently, but they are very active, I feel like, in free agency and in trades. And I mean, think of some names. Uh, they went out of their way to acquire Darius Slay recently from the Lions. That was a huge move. They had three first round picks this year or whatever. They make, they're very active. And that, that'll be exciting. And sometimes it doesn't always work, but uh, I feel like a lot of Steeler fans, myself being part of this group, we're always pushing for the Steelers to break out of their shell and, and do something that's going to grab headlines. So uh, hopefully for better, not worse. And I think Weidel will bring that to the table, um, at least in an assistant sense. So I love both the moves. Welcome to Pittsburgh. I'm happy. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Keith Butler thing, it's just it's so overblown. Um, people were so. people were complaining about uh, Bruce Arians. They, they they basically ran him out of town. They ran everybody out of town. They even ran like Coach Dad, uh, Dick LeBeau. I mean, and people were saying, "Hey, we need to get enough of this old timey thinking." You know what I mean? Like we need yeah. some fresh and new ideas. And it was just oh, it just. Come on, folks. Like, at some point, like, are, uh, sometimes, much... I mean, LeBeau lost all his stars. You know what I mean? Like, his last year here, I'm pretty sure, was Troy's last year. Or maybe there was a year without each other. But LeBeau, he, he just, everybody that he grew a legendary defense with was past their prime or gone. And it isn't all on him to try and recycle new talent. He was being dealt some pretty uh, unfortunate hands, I feel like. And he got a gig after leaving here. So I think that showed that he still had a little something, something left in the tank. Coach Dad, I mean, LeBeau. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he was over with uh, the Tennessee Titans for a little yeah. bit, too. And people, you know, they're going to complain and maybe things are outdated. But geez, I mean, a guy, what is he? He's like 80 some years old now. I mean, it's yeah. just amazing. He was in his 70s. I, I got to look that up real quick. Might be in his 90s, honestly, dude. I don't even know. There's no age is just the number to Dick LeBeau. Yeah, for real. Let me see here. Um, uh, 84. 1937 okay. man he was around as a player originally started with the cleveland browns offseason practice squad as it's listed here in 59 then lasted until 1972 made the hall of fame as a player and i think yeah. that's what if there's anybody there's there's very few folks i think that should be double enshrined in the hall of fame and i think dick lebeau is one that could definitely be there uh john madden obviously could be as a broadcaster as well uh, on top yeah. of his coaching contributions. I mean, uh, if obviously it'd be posthumously with, uh, uh, with um, John Madden now that he's passed away and he's still got a coach dad around, give the guy two rings, like one for each <laughs> little finger. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, from 72, he picks up as a coach immediately after he's done as a player with the Detroit lions, uh, goes to the Philadelphia Eagles in 73 and pretty much doesn't have a break all the way through the 2017. Uh, he had a small, uh, no, he even jumped. He didn't even have that time off from the Steelers 2014. It's hard to believe it was that long ago. Hard yeah. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. So, uh, but anyways, back to our, uh, back to our hires, Andy Weidel, Sheldon White, director of pro scouting, Dan Colbert. Some people, again, internal or nepotism or whatever. 
Do you see that happening with uh, even with Bill Belichick these days? He's got uh, we don't really know if his kid is doing anything on the sidelines. I mean, Chris Collinsworth has his annoying kid. On oh, the my sidelines. gosh. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Little Collinsworth offers nothing. Dude. At least little Belichick seems to be uh, well liked by the Patriot fan base. They think he's a genius up there. So at least that seems to be going well for them. But the Collinsworth thing. Yeah. That just reeks of nepotism. And um, Joe Buck, I mean, too, man. Joe help. Buck, second generation. So I mean, sometimes well, Joe Buck, I like Joe Buck. Yeah, that might get me flamed in the comments, but I like Joe Buck. I think he does a good job. He's a hardworking man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh the colbert yeah colbert's son does he not look just like him he's got his eyes and his shiny head oh yeah yeah he's kind of he's kind of almost the same uh, let me see if i can find something with uh, spitting images that's that whole definition he lo he looks like his kid he's you know he he's resigned to his fate a little bit unlike his father when it comes to um uh the being follically challenged like myself here so let's see I've never I, heard I've that got, publicly challenged. I like yeah, that. yeah. Well, it's it's lacking hair. Okay, so I got it. it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you don't see that because I, I've I've got the uh, hat on, but um, I, I don't know. I can't fit I can't fit Dad in there quite the whole way. But you can see you get still, the idea, though. He's got a little bit there. He's got the bald eagle look going. I mean, I, I you know I couldn't do that, man. So it's a little new generation. Maybe it'll add a little bit of spice here. Uh, maybe instill some confidence in the young man that he has. Uh, extra hair. I mean, I feel attacked even saying something like that, and I'm the one saying the comments. I mean, we're not all gifted like you here, Flash. So, oh please. If I always said if I ever started the show, I would just I would shave head too. I think it is a younger guy thing. I can't get my head around the idea of doing like the the side bushes, you know, the, the trimming on the side. I I can't. My pap had that going on, and I mean that's because he was my pap. Like I can't see myself doing that. If I ever started the show, I always said I would just shave it all off. So we got some other important things to talk about too, and I'm going to bring this up as, as soon as I can, but we got some new, uh, new hats, um, that came out, the Steelers training hats. And I just, I, I chose my headwear today because take a good look at what I got on right now, covering my, my own bald head. I, and mine's genetic too, by the way, uh, I told my, I told my folks, I'm like, as soon as it starts going, bzz, it's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just going to shave the whole thing. I, I can't do the, the comb over deal or I, I just, I, I can't. And I have people tell me, you know, there's drugs for that. You could grow some more hair. And I'm like, I don't know. It's like, I, I you're kinda, used to it now though. I mean, you rock yeah, it. That's the whole thing. If you were like starting the bald, I think that's what that target market is. The like stuff you can buy now to help with balding. I wouldn't think that somebody who's embraced it and gotten used to it and been bald for years would like go that route. I'm sure some do. But uh, I have a genetic too, man. On my mom's side, they're all bald. Every, her brother, my pap, they're all bald. You didn't you're take after get, that side. <laughs> you're supposed to get your mom's side, yeah. And uh, my dad, though, they're all thick. Like my dad, my pap, his brother, they all have thick, thick, dark Italian hair. So I think their gene just overpowered it or something got skipped or God loves me. I, one of the things happened of the above, and uh, I trust me, I don't take it for granted, dude. I, there are some days where it's not cooperating up top, and I want to like take it all off, and I'm I shake myself out of that real quick because I know you don't know what you got till it's gone. And if I didn't have my hair, I would probably go down at least four or five pegs on the attractive scale. <laughs> well, that's why I wear I wear something to cover it. That and it's been extremely hot. I got sunburn on the shoulders, but not on the head because I was smart enough. Rubbed some of the lotion in, made sure I wore. I got this nice UV hat. It looks like something out of Indiana Jones. But speaking of hats and lids and covering your dome, what I got on right now looks very suspicious to this. Like, I don't know. They called it like training cap. And they, they got camo one. And someone might like this. But I had to bring it up because it was like one of the few noteworthy things from today. Just here after the Memorial Day uh, holiday weekend. Which hopefully uh, you, you had some fun and uh, enjoyed that. And and grilled and everything else as I did and some adult beverages maybe. And that's why we didn't push going. <laughs> we had to recover from that uh, it, it coming a little later in the week, but the hat, it's like, it's the same exact hat. Like here, one more look at it. If you, if you're not seeing this on YouTube, go look it up. It's on the Steelers pro shop. It's uh, probably on Steelers.com for a day or two. It's like the same exact style. And they just use the same logo that they put on every other hat. And I'm just like, you know, you're talking about visor games sometimes and swag and jerseys and jersey numbers. Well, you know, I wear 
hats. I wear tons of them. I wear them all the time here on the show and I got to cover, I got to protect the dome here. And it's just like, come on, man, give me something that I actually want to purchase here. That's just a little variance. Yeah. yeah. I know, man. The NFL robs people blind. They don't offer any, they just recycle the same look. Like, Ooh, look at this all black version of this hat. Ooh, all platinum. Ooh, camo. It's the same three recycled all the time. And I, I know you, we don't really have a throwback emblem for the Steelers, or they do. It's like that guy punting the ball on the steel beam. All right here, and, man. Yeah. We got these things up on the wall <laughs> right on. in a couple, okay, cool, a couple spots here. <laughs> but yeah, they, the NFL apparel has always, I felt, just like been a little lackluster. That's why those, uh, the 90s and 80s, like, <clears throat> pardon me, the graphic tees from back then are so popular now and getting recycled. All the cool, like the Troy Manian Devil shirt that like Giant Eagle used to sell. Those are all getting regurgitated and sold now because back then uh early 2000s 90s 80s the nfl like had a lot more fun with, with their products now it's all just like nike pro combat sport do they really though because now you've got color rush and now you've got throwbacks like they started doing the throwbacks i was wearing it like a few weeks ago they have the rod woodson from the 75th anniversary the diamond one no, yeah, which, they do better with jerseys now i'm with yeah, that with jerseys but, they've but been like doing the actual yeah, it's a, well, you know why it's only it, New Era is like one of the few companies that has the license to do it. And they're almost like ah. exclusive and Nike is exclusive. But hey, speaking of I got one of these calendar entries that we're talking about, like we're, we're going random here. 75th anniversary uh, year, actually, somebody to bring up that wore those old 1933 jerseys with the stripes and the uh, city crest on them, which I thought were always pretty hot. And that's kind of I think that kind of threw everything NBA started to pattern maybe and MLB and then all of a sudden everybody does retro, but retro like wasn't thought of as hip or cool or anything like that lit, whatever you guys say it is. But, um, yesterday's trivia was, uh, on, on the Steelers calendar, which is always like two years out of date. It's covering stuff from like 2019. So there's plenty of Mason Rudolph content on this, by the way, throughout the year. Ooh, yes, nice. yes, definitely. My favorite. Just, definitely appeals to the target audience right here um uh, when barry <laughs> but this does too barry foster rushed for a steelers record 1690 yards nice i didn't know that yeah wow yeah in 1992 so yeah he wore uh he i think he wore maybe i maybe i might have it mixed up now i'm trying to think what year did they wear those they wore those in 94 i think barry might have been gone never mind uh i thought he might have wore that but anyways it might have been uh the old uh bam morris now that I'm thinking about it. But anyways, Barry has this record. Uh, the record still stood entering 2020. Uh, he easily shattered the previous mark of 1,246 yards held by what player? I think everybody knows. Franco? Yep, it sure was All Franco right, cool. Harris. So, yeah. Um, anyways, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I think it was 94 now that I'm thinking about it. So, Barry was 92, 93. Barry, uh, another trivia question for you. He ended up, uh, I think he got like hurt or something, and he just totally fell off. Ended up with the Carolina Panthers, and I, I think he actually, um, in training camp, he retired. He, like, completely just left football. Uh, they yeah. were going to be the expansion Carolina Panthers, so there's something for you. Like Somebody, Vince Williams did the, uh, the other year. Yeah. He showed yeah. up for camp and then realized, you know what, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy to think that. I'm going to look up the old Barry Foster. Right now. Oh, Barry Foster, the actor. No, Barry Foster Steelers. That's the only one that matters here. And let's see. Uh, that's crazy yeah. he gets no love as like an all-time great with that record i never really hear people talk about barry foster yeah nope nope he did get to wear that jersey so my mind my mind my, my mind isn't mush he went to carolina in 95 that would have been the expansion year yeah. right there uh he played 11 games due to limited to injuries 93 after setting that record he only had uh, 711 yards in nine games and eight touchdowns he still made the pro bowl though despite that, the popularity contest, of course. And yeah. he played 11 games following year, 851 yards. He had 179 yards on 31 carries and a touchdown uh, in a game that season, too. Uh, it gave him um, – he had three catches for 13 yards. This was against the Indianapolis Colts. It gave him more yards as an individual than the entire Colts offense in that game. <laughs> Do it all. Yeah, yeah. Barry Foster versus Marshall Falk. Remember Marshall Falk with the Colts? Jeez. Yeah, man. for sure. So that was, that's pretty crazy. So um, I guess his uh, contract made him expendable. Steelers traded him uh, to the Carolina Panthers. He was cut in training camp, failed a physical, and then he retired. Came out of retirement to sign with the Cincinnati Bengals after the Bengals had drafted Kajana Carter out of Penn State, number one 
overall NFL draft. And that's one of the tragedies of football right there, man, because uh, I'm telling you. But he changed his mind, as anybody who would go to Cincinnati should, yeah. uh, age 26 and out of football. So it's pretty uh, – he said he felt like a 60-year-old running back. That's what it said here. And then he uh, he later uh, returned his reported 300000 signing bonus. Left town, retired again a few days later without playing a game. Uh, sa- said he saved enough money to retire. Good for him. Yeah. Health took his money. Told you we had some random stuff here. <laughs> you know what else? We got some OTA things. So there you um, go. let's see. We're, well, we're still on this. Let's bring up. There's some gear for you, my friend. Oh, yeah. There's Najee. Beast mode visor. And that's so sick. I know that's uh, so sick. He, he's asking for a lot of pressure, but I love it. P- pressure applied creates diamonds. Where are diamonds in the Steeler emblem? Or I know they're not actual diamonds, they're called something I, different, but uh, I, I, I hypercloid, hypercloids or something like that. Hyperclonsoid, never... yeah, whatever. <laughs> but hey, we got some people reporting things because look at those legs, the ham yep. hocks. Uh, they were saying uh, that Najee's up to 244, and all of a sudden it spread like fire everywhere. Uh, just uh, over the, the today, this this morning, earlier today, and Najee already came back and said, "What he played at 240 last year." Yeah, he clapped back. I, I love that. I love that from Najee that he feels comfortable enough to tell the reporter, "Like, no, dude, you're wrong. I, I have no idea what you're talking about." I, I believe his words were, "Brah." Like B-R-A-H. So I, I I love Najee. And the fact that he felt compelled to come forward and be like, no, I, I was this weight last year. It just speaks volumes to his personality and his comfort level. And uh, yeah, I actually, I got caught in that tornado of a lie. I messaged our little backroom group chat and I was like, can anybody find this news report where Najee's put on like 10 pounds? I would love to like talk about it and see it. And before I could even look for it i pulled up twitter and there is Najee's tweet at the reporter telling them you're making stuff up i was this weight last year and so yeah it's it's a non-story he's as thick as ever but he was he was that thick last year too yeah yeah and you know what we've got another guy that we need to toss into uh this conversation let's see if i can find him uh well while we're on the swag and everything else can you identify this guy Right here with uh, all the tat, the night, all the tats, all the way up, uh, up the arms, down the legs, too, man. It's Mason Cole, right? It is. Yeah, and dude, I know. We should, we should probably talk about that too. We're bouncing around on some different things, but um, I hear he has beautiful tats, and yeah, uh, rightfully amazing. so. You know, when you're when you're getting paid to be a pro athlete or really anything where you don't have to present yourself in a customer service kind of fashion or sales, I. Sales, I would be covered head to toe in tattoos. Maybe not my face, but I would have so many more than I already do. You wouldn't have, like, say, uh, one of those Mike Tyson tattoos just uh, right on your forehead or something like that. No, like, he right rocks on... it. I wouldn't say anything mean about Mike Tyson. He, oh, he nor would I. Great he... with that tattoo. It's beautiful, uh, but I wouldn't do that myself. No, I hear you loud and clear. But uh, Mason Cole, so what's there to be made of, you know, how it goes? He's now the, what, starting center for week one this season just because he took some of the team one reps here at the OTAs. Isn't that how it works out? Yeah, it's mail it in. That's the depth chart. We got it. Send it. That's it. Mason Cole, week one, baby. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, man. I, I love this time of year just because I am always so starved for some kind of Steelers content. Any picture, any news report, any any contract, I'm so excited to see. And it is exciting to see the new guys and the veterans running around out there in their jerseys and their helmets, catching passes, running routes, making plays to an extent without making contact. But it's so early. It's so, so, so early. And some of this stuff holds merit right now, but it's on those players who are in the positions at the top of the air quote depth chart right now to keep it that way. Um, if anybody out there has ever played a sport, boys or girls, you know, soccer, football, baseball, lacrosse, when you get together for your initial practice sessions, when you're getting to know the team or you're coming back for the next year, it's always the most senior and the guys who believe they're going to start and and like have the most experience and success to a certain degree who get to take the reps first. Like they are respected in the coach's eyes. 
But I've seen in person, I've seen through the NFL plenty of times where just because that guy is the starter right now, you know, he's at the top of the depth chart right now, figuratively, and he's taking the reps with the ones. It's not going to take much for a younger guy with more talent to overtake that spot. As soon as that younger guy, whoever that may be, uh, can start to flash potential and talent and consist. I wasn't even talking about Kenny Pickett. I, mean, I was talking about Kendrick Green or George Pickens or uh, Austin, because right now uh, Anthony Miller is blowing my mind from these practice videos I'm seeing. They're really short snippets and you can't take too much from this, but Anthony Miller has been going like first in the receiver line a lot, um, even in front of Claypool and Deontay was back today. And I noticed that Miller was still like going first. And I think he's a perfect example of what I just described. He's viewed as a guy at the top right now, but as soon as the young guys start to really show out and um, show why they were drafted where they were to where they were, I, I think the position is Anthony Miller's to lose, you know, same goes for Mason Cole right now to a certain degree. Mason Cole's in a better spot than Anthony Miller, but it, it all is connected in a way. You see what I'm saying? We're like, these guys are top of the line right now for the practices and the workouts and the, the catch line, whatever. But it, it's not going to take much for the younger guys to start seceding them, I think. Oh, I, yeah. Just, is that, that's just common sports. Yeah, yeah. And um, Mason Cole, I think they want to see what he could do as a center first. And they're going to make yeah. Kendrick Green earn that spot if it is his spot to come back and earn. Maybe maybe they made a small mistake and they're owning up to it maybe not i don't know uh but you know yeah. everybody tries to, again they try to read the tea leaves and everybody was doing that you had already kind of snuck that in under the wire here but oh hey look nothing to talk about now remember when somebody was calling this they were I, I, he said i don't know these guys come up with like these four liners that i can't even like reproduce in my mind but Basically, oh, cryptic tweets, you no mean? story. Yeah, no story there oh, whatsoever. They say, they but say the Blue's tweet like the enemy speaks softly and holds a knife, and you never know what to make of that. <laughs> yeah, but Deontay Johnson is back, and everybody's like, oh, they're all of a sudden they're losing their minds because it's not like some like crazy holdout for money, and he's gonna, you know, come on now. Uh, he, he pretty much just told you that. Actually, there was something like that the other day. Devin Bush just typed. Like went like uh, I don't know completely like a like a a crazed animal like my cat on a keyboard. I don't oh, yeah, know looked what like he, he sat on his phone or something. I think he sat on his phone or maybe like a little cousin grabbed it because it was just a bunch of letters jumbled up and there was two tweets back to back. So I, I think it was just like a little kid had his phone or he sat on it. I really don't know. Yeah, Deontay's back though. I'm I'm psyched. I I, I was never worried about any kind of holdout, dude. I, I a lot of players will miss the first week of OTAs. It's not a big deal. Yeah, well, when Devin Bush did that, I had actually found out, uh, piggybacking from the last time me and Brian were on, and this is, actually, this movie came out before I was even born. Uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is actually on Netflix right now. So I went and I, I was checking it out, and I forgot about the Knights Who Say Me. And if you're not familiar with that, they're they're that's what they say. They go knee knee, and it drives everybody that's the crazy. Flesh wound movie, right? Yes, it is. See, yeah. you know, you know. Well, that's what I said. Uh, they're no longer when they come back with the shrubbery. They're no longer the knights who say knee. They're the knights who say, and there's this big long line that they say. I just pointed down to uh, Devin Bush's tweet <laughs> because it's <laughs> okay, about no, the most relevant okay, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was just uh, it's just great. And, and last year, don't let's. Let's not uh, get it twisted. He was saying some pretty crazy stuff on Twitter. Oh, Devin <laughs> Bush. I know, dude. Thank God that that stopped. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that ever gets brought back to the surface, but hopefully not. Hopefully it's very dormant, like, yeah. like a mummy in Egypt in the pyramids locked away forever. But yeah, Anthony Miller, uh, he was taking some, uh, taking some snaps, taking some reps and getting uh, some of the first team stuff, as you said, and we'll see. Uh, he's getting some opportunity to show what he could show, and he, you got to do it. You you can't wait around. We've already got guys uh, getting uh, getting released, and one of, one of the names uh, that I'm going to say is just uh, kind of surfaced here a little bit too was they got rid of, I know, it, I, I know you're going to say this, it was uh, Tra Trayvon or Trevin uh, Mason who came out of the rookie camp, and you said it was the wrong Mason that it got rid of. Yeah, no, yeah. I said so close. I said I wasn't oh, so talking close, about anything. So close. Particular. So somebody else said, said it. He was so close to making the team, is what I was saying. So close. Oh, Dang. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Mason. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't read something <laughs> else into it. This guy. This guy right here. Okay. 
he was already in the back rooms and said, ah, see, that was for you. Well, <laughs> whatever. So anyways, um, we got uh, some, d he was defensive lineman and yeah. you've got D DeMarvin Leal, who I don't think we officially covered, but he's, he's been uh, interviewed and on the record is saying he's going to put on a little bit of weight and that's where he's going to be playing. But with the, with the move of getting rid of the other Mason here, and you see Cam Hayward here working out with the young buck. Wonder if it's uh, Stefan to it is maybe coming back. Some people were saying he's been working out in his home in Indianapolis. I think it was Cam that actually came on record and, and was saying that he's, he's not worried about him. He's expecting him to maybe come back. Still no official word yet, but we got kind of a hint. Maybe this is a second hint. They didn't have to make room on the roster. He's never been officially off like the 53 man roster IR. Yeah. But now the 90, you know, he's been on the 90 this entire time. So I, they didn't necessarily have to make a corresponding move to pull him off of something that's like a non-football injury or, or some type of commissioner exempt or anything like that. But some people are starting to think as you would with training camp, you need bodies to take a certain amount of reps. So if somebody gets hurt, they're bringing on like another corner or another wide receiver or somebody from another position gets released in order to bring somebody else on that. So they have enough numbers to be able to do functionally what it is they need to work on. But we're in OTAs. We're practicing in shorts. I don't know if you could read that much into it, but perhaps, mayhaps, could be a signal of things to come. So we got uh, we got that going on. A little bit of D-line news that we don't usually get. Oh, I wish you wouldn't have said that, Joe, because I didn't even think about that. It didn't cross my mind for a second, probably because I was making such a great joke about. Yeah, Mason, exactly. But... You're poking your fun at number two, <laughs> QB two right now. I didn't even correlate that. Yeah, that could be what that means. I've, I've I, the term forget the word forget is, is extreme, but I'm using it as like a half term. I, I forget that Stefan to is like still on the team all the time until I see his name. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be sick if we got him back. So uh, that didn't cross my mind seeing uh, Trayvon Mason get released, but I like the way you think, and I'm all for it now. If Stephon Tuitt shows up to camp, like no announcement, and Twitter will break for at least 13 or 14 minutes. I think since Elon <laughs> Musk is on the case now, they might get around to fixing it faster. But if Stephon Tuitt just shows up and 91's out there in a jersey running around, people will freak out in, in a good way too because they should because Tuitt's a hell of a player, and the defense – like. I think the defense is still really good, but with two, it they're a whole nother notch. Yeah. And we have some other news, by the way, front office news, and then we could jump right back. Um, we'll jump right back into what we were talking about with some of the players, but Brandon Hunt, according to Mark Caboli with the athletic, uh, Brandon Hunt, the pro scouting coordinator and uh, Rick Riperish college scouting coordinator are no longer with the Pittsburgh Steelers. According to the team website, as he is noted, I guess they have been, uh, removed for the people who refresh this thing every single day or look at instagrams everything like that i don't know who has time to do that but um they had uh 19 years of combined experience with the steelers in those roles and hunt has taken a football operations job with the philadelphia eagles uh eagles and bills were both kind of sniffing around at him so now back to your regularly scheduled um uh, programming here, Deontay Johnson isn't the only wide receiver who was making a little bit of noise uh, in OTAs. You had uh, Chase Claypool opening up and saying that he wants to be the best receiver in the NFL. And there's people that are actually beating beating him up over those comments. And it's like, who are you folks to not want to run down a guy? Yeah, I know he opened his mouth and he says that. And that opens you up to some criticism. But who doesn't want to be the best at what they're doing? I mean, even we want to do that here. As the I don't Black bother with those standard. people. They're morons, yeah. dude. They, they're <laughs> morons. It's, it's, it's all the time. It's, it's, these people exist, and they show up every once in a while. And it's the, it's the same people that complain about uh, any kind of celebration, anything, any kind of show of personality, any kind of, ooh, look at me, is going to rub some people the wrong way. And Claypool really wasn't even doing that. You ask any draft prospect, even a seventh-round pick, like if you ask Chris Oladokun who he thought the best quarterback in the draft was upcoming, he would have said himself. And Claypool's doing nothing different than any other player does. I love hearing that from Chase. I've actually heard that he's taken um, a step forward in a leadership role during these OTAs and looking like he's committed. Um, he's he's felt the need actually to come forward and, and say that he's committed because uh, I guess he can feel the pressure and, and hear the comments. And 
it's a shame that he has to answer for that. But yeah, dude, you, you want your receivers. Hopefully Deontay says that. Hopefully Anthony Miller says that. Hopefully George Pickens and Calvin Austin say it. You want them to all be the best receiver possible. Nothing crazy about that. And I got news for you. If Claypool ends up being really good, then that's a great thing for the Steelers because then they don't have to break the bank for Deontay. And if Deontay outprices himself, then they'll have Claypool. Like, so it, it, it's just people love to bitch, dude. It's classic. It's, <laughs> it really people is. Are Yenzers are going to yens. And that's the other reason why it's like very, um, very great that uh, Omar Khan is the guy right here. Cause I had a little bit of skepticism. Like if Brandon hunts in the same spot, could he be held hostage by an agent? Like how much interaction or how much experience does he have in working with those type of calls, scenarios, situations? Uh, and I believe that might be the same thing with like Andy Weidel. And that's the reason why he's an assistant general manager and not outright hired for the job as they're doing these set interviews and second interviews. And Let's bring this up while we're at it, too. While we're bringing up front office and, and going back and forth here. Doug Whaley may have had the inside track to this job until he said that Jack Ham would have probably went undrafted <laughs> in this current day and <laughs> oh, that age. that was him that said that? I didn't know that yes, was his quote. Yes, yes. I think he shot himself in the foot, uh, proverbial foot there. Uh, by oh, yeah, they took that resume, tossed it right in the trash, right to the left of them. I said, like, right, oh, he said this about Jack Ham. He cannot evaluate talent. See ya. No, no, not at all. And so uh, I guess we'll kind of, we, we got, we can't avoid this. Got to talk about the quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, and you got to talk about Mitchell Trubisky is taking the number one reps. We've already talked about this with Mason Cole. We're talking oh, about Mitch this now, dude. It's Mitch. It's, it's, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. Mitch. Did I not say Mitch Trubisky? You said uh, Mitchell. He goes, it's back to oh, Mitch now. Come on, man. I, no, I was like, did I script the name? Cause that's I just true. said, I say Mason. I was saying Mason Cole, and I'm like, I'm not saying Mason Rudolph, but we we're talking about Mason Cole taking those uh, first yeah. team reps. You're throwing me off, man. Don't do that Money to me Mitch. today. I'm still trying to recover from the holiday weekend, man. Didn't I tell you that? But you've got uh, you got all these quarterbacks here that are in the OTAs, and everyone's going to take it as they will. Uh, Money Mitch, Mason Rudolph taking a lot of the second team snaps. And you were saying if uh, Mason ends up taking some of the first team reps. Yeah, people are probably going to lose lose their collective minds because they won't know what to say about it. But at the same time, he's a veteran guy who's been in the system. So if he ends up uh, first in line somewhere out there, we'll find out because Najee seems to think that all of these guys are pretty clueless and can't. He's going to take anything. first team reps. He, he uh, should, people better point. brace for it at this point now. And you know me, I am not a Mason uh, enthusiast in a sense. But yeah, he's going to get first team reps. I've been saying that too. He's going to get. Remember I said uh, all three of them are going to get their chance, I believe, in a preseason game to go with with the ones, with Deontay, Claypool, Fryermuth, the line. I think that's all going to happen for all three of them. So, yeah, people, like we said, are going to bitch. They're going to yince. But, they, yeah, prepare yourselves, all right? Get your seatbelts ready, your eject button. It's going to happen. Don't freak out. We'll make it through together. No, no, no. you, you got to understand. The keys of the franchise go directly to this guy. With his small hands and his gloves. <laughs> that is not that they're bigger than my hands. Well, I don't know, man. I can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like total opposites body wise. Yeah, less hair, more head, bigger <laughs> hands. You know, it's it's sort of those things there. But yeah, uh, exactly. That's going to be that's an interesting take. I didn't really get that far in my brain yet, but only three preseason games. So there is very likely, but it depends. Are you going to let everybody play in all three of those games since there's only three games? Or is there only like one game that's worth a damn this I don't year? know. Yeah, I can't pick out what dress rehearsal will be because usually it's supposed to be the third one, but now that'll be the last one. So I don't know. I, I think they're going to try. Maybe they'll do this and they'll just do the first two games and they'll like, you know, flip series. Um, but I don't think they're going to like, make Pickett or Mason um, definitely not Mitch. I think Mason and Kenny both are going to get their chances with the starters one way or another in the preseason games. If it ends up being like, like if Mitch starts week one and Mason starts week two, but they put Kenny in for the second quarter with everybody still in, I could see that being the route they take. And then week three, maybe let Ola duck in and whoever's QB three in their eyes, just split the game. Uh, but yeah, having only three games does change the vibe because I, I can't pick out when the dress rehearsal is supposed to be. Yeah, and even to that extent, there's two 
preseason home games this season. So you've got week one with the Seattle Seahawks and week three with the Detroit Lions. And they're, uh, the games are Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, which is kind of unique. And the one is down in Jacksonville, the one that's in the middle there, the Oreo cookie. So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I hadn't given it a whole lot of thought. and you, I don't think you do the dress rehearsal on the road in Jacksonville. Uh, particularly uh, August 20th, at least it's a seven o'clock game, but man, it should be, it should be cooking still down there It'll be yeah. in the nineties, but any more, do we have any other random thoughts today? I am, I'm drawing a blank on if there's something we missed, didn't cover, um, um oh. a Kella Witherspoon and DeMonte Casey. I want to give, go. I'm not stealing. I'll never steal anything without giving credit unless I hate you. And I think your show sucks, but, uh, Arthur Motes. He said, because he's got... So which is this? This is... Um, oh, you're crediting Motes, so you like Motes. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I'm, I'm saying I'm not going to steal this because I didn't know this myself, but Arthur Motes is down there because he gets like a great media pass. It's it's better than a regular one, apparently. He gets to stay longer than regular media. I don't know if it's because he played or he's still in well favor or what, but Motes has been saying numerous times now that Akella Witherspoon looks and acts like CB1 this year. He's carrying himself with a swag, uh, Mo said uh, almost word for word, he'll break up a pass and then he'll like do the big boy walk like on him. And I, that's what you want in your cornerback. You want them to think, uh, here's a callback to what you're just saying. You want him to think he's the best in the game because corners, they're dealing with the best athletes in the world, NFL wide receivers. And they, the corner doesn't know where he's going. The receiver knows where he's going. So the receiver always has an advantage. So you want to have, some kind of advantage when you're a cornerback. And a lot of the time that's your confidence and your tape study, your film study. But the fact that Witherspoon seems to be picking up where he left off last year from a confidence standpoint and locking dudes down and just looking the part of a cornerback one is great to hear. I love hearing that. And Motes has mentioned him twice on, on different shows, um, the Motes and Deke show. And then Motes will also just like take videos at practice I've seen on his uh, YouTube live. Which, by the way, like and subscribe. Still see down the ground. Like and subscribe. Thank you. We're almost at 5,000 hey, oh, oh, my goodness. Yes. We Love have to all. mention that. We always say the like, <laughs> comment, and subscribe. But, but the like, last comment, check. subscribe. Even if you disagree, comment. A lot of people disagree with me. Not as many as people disagree with Joe, but a lot of people still disagree with me. So I want to hear it all. I got thick skin. I'll even comment back when I can. And the other thing Motes mentioned, not thing, the other player Motes mentioned today, who I forgot was on the team, uh, DeMonte <laughs> Casey. He I said he's making plays. Yeah, I had forgotten uh, yeah. about KZ also. It's kind of crazy because I was saying that about um, uh, Miles Jack just recently too. And it's like uh, just watching him. What's he wearing? 51? 51, it's, baby. Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, outer body experience with that. It's uh, I'll have to get used to it. You don't like it. it? I'm not going to say I don't like it. I just, um, I don't know. It's just, what did he, he had 44, right? Yeah, yeah so Dirk he's Watts always number. been like, you know, this athletic cut above linebacker. So jerseys have always been kind of weird for him. He wore 30 at UCLA in 44 for Jacksonville. So when we traded for him, I really, I thought maybe he'd go back to 30 because that's been open since Connor left. 44 is obviously Derek Watt, or not obvious, depending on how much you pay attention. Uh, so I really had no clue where he was going to go, and he went classic linebacker with 51. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I, I mean, it's looked really good before, and it's looked really bad before here. So it's up to Jack to hopefully be more, hopefully he's more James Ferrier than Sean Spence or Kevin Bostick. Yeah, there it was, Jacksonville. Those jerseys were pretty sharp, though. I think with yeah, the I like Jacksonville's too. jerseys. I do. I like the it's, color scheme. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, who would wear it though? You'd be embarrassed. <laughs> like they. Had, oh yeah, yeah. Until they're decent again for like goodness, five minutes, and they suck won again. like five games in a season like once in the last like eleven years or something crazy like that. But yeah, we're twenty twenty subscribers away from uh, the milestone, the five thousand. So. Even if you're listening somewhere else and you enjoy the show, you could help us put us over the milestone. Just to hop on your YouTube account and hit and jam on that subscribe button. Share it to some of your friends. Uh, Mute the notifications. And, I don't care. You know, I, I had don't, coworkers don't do in my that. <laughs> don't tell. You don't, know, don't, don't, yeah, don't. I mean, if you really care about the Steelers, for sure, we just don't want on. you to just subscribe. We want you to also uh, patronize the show and be here and. Yeah, you know, that's like, great like, too. Like, comment, and subscribe, man. All, all three of those. Yeah, things. listen to Joe, not me. Joe, Joe knows what he's talking about. He's <laughs> the boss. The, but just subscribe, though, for sure. Yeah, that's the recipe for success. So we, we've talked about the, the the front office moves, the ugly hats that came out, uh, or the uninspired, kind of like the Super Bowl logos. In any time recently, Jeez. oh my god, dude, don't don't get me started. I can't talk about that. Not not another day. I, <laughs> I hate 
the Super Bowl logos and how they've absolutely ruined them. What what does it hurt to put a little pizzazz, a little pastel color on, on the Super Bowl logos? Why are they all just silver with the Lombardi? We know what that looks like. They ran out of marketing budget. I don't, <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. I That's right. yeah. something Money. goofy. Don't it know. It all comes back to money with the NFL, dude. <laughs> they got plenty of it. I know. I, I love the NFL, but that's the one thing that I can't, I can't defend for them is that they're very greedy and they, they make questionable decisions sometimes on what to do with that money. So I mean, but I, I would literally die without the NFL. So I need them, and well, they know that's, it. That's always good to know. We'll we'll help try help try and keep Zach alive over here, and uh, maybe we can go back to like the way the Super Bowl uh, forty logo or something looked. Yes, yeah, and subscribe. Yes. So. <laughs> Oh man. Anyways, um Hey yeah, at least the last two wins the Steeler have that they were their own unique logos. XL's is really sick. Uh and then um Super Bowl forty threes isn't bad either. So at least there's some pizzazz on those. You have forty three right over your right shoulder on the um is that the oh, yeah. uh the Tribune Review right there. Joy of six. Yeah. That's autograph too, baby. You can't really see it, but it is. Nice, nice. I I dig it. I totally dig it. And um Definitely the Big Ben stuff. That was your, we were, we were making fun of you with the birthday. You got some of the swag up. Absolutely. So anyways, we're going to put a bow on this show. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as we've already been. We, we're pandering and begging for once. So just put up with I'm it. I'm not we begging. I'm being polite. Politefully asking. Please. I am proposing. Please. But we're already on the two percenters and hopefully they've already done it or else they have to revoke their two percentership. <laughs> yeah. We'll send shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to do some contests. It's been a while. We're gonna have to give something out. Can't give away preseason tickets because nobody wants them. Did that no, one? I got time. a Steve. I got a Steve Nelson jersey and a Martavis Bryant jersey. If anybody wants some, baby. Oh, geez. That, but that, those are like that, those are throwbacks. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Not new jerseys. Shout out GMFB. Not, oh man, I really wish I, I tagged one last year and. Uh, you know, you see some of the stuff that the strip district still sells, like famous Amos Saraway or something like oh, that. Yeah, it's I've like where they I've find these from. But man, I'm trying to think of the one. Oh, 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 I remember what it was now. I was in uh, Rivers Casino. Now, usually I'm tailgating uh, like otherwise, but uh, I forget which game this was. And we just decided to, maybe it was inclement weather or something. And we just decided to hang out at the casino pre gaming. And there was somebody that walked by and I've seen some interesting ones. Like, you know, you have the Super Bowl get together. So Chris Fu, Matu Malafala. Yes. I nailed that one. Stuck the landing. Yeah. That was um, good. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you see all the food jerseys walking in front of you. And you're like, okay, that's Fu's family. Or you see like the high Smith clan. Like I mentioned walking in the Jesse one time James. and uh, just, yeah. yeah, something of that nature or Papa Watt walking around uh, down at Woolies uh, was, was sitting there eating. There was like nobody else. There it was like two tables, me and my dude. Uh, who isn't even a Steelers fan. It was just somebody I was catching up with in Pittsburgh. And I'm like, hey, that's TJ Watt's dad over there. He was talking about he was just in uh, Chicago. Um, that was back when, a few years ago, obviously pre-COVID. So uh, Derek was playing with uh, the Chargers. And yeah. um, I think it was the Chargers. Or no, no, wait. I don't try to think right. which game it was. Yeah, he was, but it wasn't. He was in uh, Chicago, he had said, uh, to see um, uh, JJ with Houston and the Texans were playing with the Bears because this was a Monday night game. That okay. had, to be, had to have been my birthday that year when Mason Rudolph came back from uh, triumphantly from the concussion and led the Steelers to victory on Monday Night Football against the Miami Dolphins. So got to throw that one out there. But anyways, yeah, yeah. it was interesting. Great birthday gift for you. He did it just for you. Traveling around. Well, not, uh, Papa Watt didn't, but yeah, I don't even no, know where Mason. we're going with this. But, <laughs> but the jersey that I saw that was not the new jersey. Yeah. Brace yourself for this one. I don't know why anybody would wear this. Not Mike Wallace. You get people who still wear Antonio Brown, but another wide receiver. You picked my brain here. Wasn't San Antonio. What was he good? No. Oh, okay. Lima Swede. It was. There you Where go. do you find a Lima Swede? It's probably jersey? a joke. That guy's probably being a jag off. I mean, like, I have a Christian Leitner team USA jersey, and like everyone knows <laughs> he was he didn't play. He was terrible. And they picked him over Shaq, which was like a whole controversy to be on Team USA that year. So I just got that because I thought it was funny. You know, I, I don't really, I stay in my lane a lot of times, but the Team USA, that's because Leitner was the, wasn't he voted the best player in college basketball that year? Oh, he's and, he's and Duke arguably and the best ever college player. Yeah, yeah dude, he, he deserved it, but Shaq was like a sensation that year, and they thought that he should have been, because they picked one, they picked one college guy to be on Team USA, yeah. it was him or Shaq, and they picked Leitner. That 90, 1992 dream team. Now, here's another interesting story before I go, and we're talking about swag. Uh, we'll see how many people in the comments remember this. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. 
You sent in, uh, I don't know how many box tops and like a, a check or a money order for like five bucks. And they sent you a dream team coat, like jacket, a little zip up windbreaker. And oh, that's sick, dude. No, but it was made out of like Dollar Tree tablecloth material uh, like you would get for like a party, a birthday party or something. And not like a nice windbreaker. Yeah, and I don't know if it still exists. I'll have to I'll have to ping my mom and see if it's stashed away somewhere. She keeps some of the most ridiculous things hanging around, as moms would do. But I wonder if anybody remembers that or anyone else got it. It was like it was like the Olympian style dream team coat because they had them yeah. all like on the on the box. It wasn't on Wheaties, it was on cornflakes. So that's, that's going back, man. I'm talking 92, man. I was probably like 11 years old or something, but I really, I looked up to those guys being six, five. I was, but I was really into basketball. Didn't like Michael Jordan back there. thought he was a jerk. But then again, as people know on here and have already, uh, scolded me for, I was a Cavs fan. Uh, so <laughs> I didn't, so didn't like, yeah, the Craig Elo posterized shot that still hits in the feels. And that was about the last time I liked the Cavs before LeBron came and went decision wise. And yeah, screw that guy. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way i feel hey people have strong feelings about people like antonio brown i could have my strong feelings about lebron james okay oh, for sure <laughs> anyways yeah. anyways one percenters that are still left tell us about your kellogg's cornflake story there if you yeah, got comment one. below yes absolutely um anyways uh my name is joe his name somewhere over there point the other direction Zach Flash Zeladonia, uh, as we encourage everyone out there, each and every time we close out this show, we encourage you to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 